Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to convert a fraction to a percent. We will go through four examples. For numbers one and two, we will work through them by hand, so without a calculator. And then numbers three and four, we will work through those by discussing what we need to plug into a calculator. Now when converting fractions to percents, we can do this by dividing and then multiplying. We take the fraction and divide the numerator by the denominator, the top divided by the bottom. This will give us a decimal. We then need to convert that decimal to a percent by multiplying it by 100. And remember, a quick way to multiply by 100 is to move the decimal twice to the right. So we go from a fraction to a decimal and then that decimal to a percent. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have three fourths. Well, we need to start by dividing the numerator by the denominator, three divided by four. So let's come down here and set this up. So three divided by four. Now, as far as three divided by four, how many whole groups of four in three? How many fours in three? Well, we can't do that. So we need a decimal after three and then a zero in order to start to work through this problem. Now remember, zeros to the right of a decimal or decimal digits do not change the value of a number. So we're able to do this. Now let's take the decimal and bring it straight up into where the quotient, the answer, will be. Now we can go through our division steps. I'm going to extend this division bar here. And now we can think of this as 30 divided by four. How many whole groups of four, how many fours in 30? Well, seven, that gets us to 28. Now make sure that seven is above the zero, not the three. Since we used that zero and thought of this as 30 divided by seven. Now we multiply, seven times four is 28. Subtract, 30 minus 28 is two. Now we don't have a clean cut zero at the bottom there. So what we can do, we can use another zero that we can bring down in order to continue the problem. So now we have 20, 20 divided by four, which is five. So let's put our five up here, then multiply five times four, 20, subtract 20 minus 20 is zero. So we went all the way over within our division problem and we have that clean cut zero at the bottom. So we are done, 0.75. So I'm going to come to the side here and rewrite our decimal. And I'm starting with a zero and then a decimal. This is typical when writing decimals because that's going to help us recognize we have a decimal here. It's going to help us see the decimal. So 0 0.75. So 3 fourths in decimal form is 0 0.75. Let's multiply it by 100 to convert it to a percent. And a quick way to do that, again, move the decimal twice to the right. So once, twice. So the decimal is now here. This gives us 75%. And we don't need that decimal at the end since we have a whole number here. We can leave that off. So 3 fourths equals 75%. Let's move on to number two, where we have seven fifteenths. So we need to do seven divided by 15, the numerator divided by the denominator. So seven divided by 15. Now seven divided by 15, how many whole groups of 15 in seven? How many 15s in seven? Well, we can't do that. So let's use a decimal and a zero in order to work through this problem. I'm going to extend the division bar here and bring the decimal straight up. Now we can think of this as 70 divided by 15. So how many whole groups of 15 in 70? Well, four. That gets us to 60. Now we multiply. Four times 15 is 60. Subtract 70 minus 60 gives us 
10. So we don't have that clean cut zero, we can continue on. So let's use another zero that we can bring down. So now we have 100, 100 divided by 15. How many whole groups of 15 in 100? Well, six, that gets us to 90. So let's put our six, then multiply six times 15 is 90. Subtract 100 minus 90 is 10. So we still don't have that clean cut zero. Let's use another zero that we can bring down. So we have 100 again, 100 divided by 15. How many whole groups of 15 in 100? Well, six. Six times 15 is 90. Subtract, we get 10 again. And you may notice that we have a pattern here. And this is going to give us a repeating decimal. It's never going to end. We can add as many zeros as we'd like and bring them down and we're not going to get to that clean cut zero. And we end up with 100 again. So we have 100 divided by 15. How many whole groups of 15 in 100? Well, six, six times 15 is 90. Subtract 100 minus 90 gives us 10 again. And again, those sixes are going to continue forever. So what we can do here, I'm going to write the decimal off to the side. So we have 0 0.46666, and these continue on. We have a repeating decimal. So we have a few different options here, but before we get to that, we have our decimal, so we need to multiply by 100. Let's move the decimal once, twice to the right. So we end up with 46.6. 6 repeating percent. So how do we write this? The first way we can write 7 fifteenths equals 46.6 and then use a bar over the six to show that that digit repeats percent. The next way to write this percent is to round. And for this example, we're going to round to the tenths place. So at the bottom here, we see we have a six in the tenths with a six to the right in the hundredths place. This tells us to round up. So if we round to the nearest tenth, we have seven fifteenths is approximately, and I'm using the approximately symbol here since we are rounding, it's not exact, 46.7. So rounding to the nearest tenth. You can also round to the nearest hundredth or whatever place you would like. And then the last option I'm going to mention is rounding to the nearest whole percent. And that's going to be the ones place. So if we look at the bottom here, we have a six in the ones place with a six to the right in the tenths. So is this closer to 46% or 47%? Well, that six in the tenths place tells us to round up. This is closer to 47%. So seven fifteenths is approximately 47%. So a few different options there as far as working with that repeating decimal. So when we come across repeating decimals, we can still write them as a percent, or even if we come across long decimals that don't repeat, we're able to round those if we need to. Let's move on to numbers three and four. Here are numbers three and four. Let's jump into number three where we have 24 thirtieths. Well, we need to start by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So 24 divided by 30. So we plug in 24 divided by 30. That gives us 0 0.88 tenths. So that's 24 thirtieths as a decimal. Now we need to convert that decimal to a percent by multiplying it by 100. And again, we can do this by moving the decimal twice to the right. So once, twice to the right. And we can fill this gap 
this place with a zero. This gives us 80%. And we don't need that decimal at the end since we have a whole number here. We can leave that off. So 24 thirtieths equals 80%. Let's move on to number four where we have 3 sixteenths. So we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. So we need to plug in 3 divided by 16. That gives us 0 0.1875. So 1,875 ten thousandths. So that's 3 sixteenths as a decimal. Now we need to multiply it by 100 to convert it to a percent. Let's do that by moving the decimal once, twice to the right. So the decimal goes in between the eight and the seven. That gives us 18.75%. So 3 sixteenths equals 18.75%. And I do want to mention, we can round this to the nearest whole percent if needed. And all we need to do here is round to the ones place. So is this closer to 18% or 19%? Well, we need to take a look at the ones place here and the tenths place to the right. That seven tells us that we round up. So three sixteenths is approximately, and I'm using the approximately symbol here since we are rounding, it's not exact. 3 sixteenths is approximately 19%. So this is exact right here, and then this is rounded to the nearest whole percent. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if we end up with a very long decimal or a repeating decimal we can always round if need be. So there you have it. There's how to convert a fraction to a percent. Divide the numerator by the denominator in order to get a decimal, and then multiply that decimal by 100 to convert it to a percent. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.